Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Jacob, and I've heard that you want to learn how to use Vim to make your programming workflow about three times faster and more efficient. Good for you. Let's get started. I'm going to assume that you already have Vim installed. If not, if you're on a Linux machine, chances are it's in your default repositories if it isn't installed on your computer already. If you are on Windows, go to vim.org and you can download a binary from there. And if you're on a Mac, install Mac Vim. All right, so I'm going to assume that you have Vim installed and running if you don't just start vim up right now and you can follow along with me i'm going to start vim um of course uh how do you edit a file in vim because it is a text editor right um well if you're on linux like me you type in vim and then the name of a file i have two files here like client client.js that sounds like a good one to edit so vim client.js press enter all right cool here's my file what do i do now well, it's a text editor, right? <sighs> so you can use the arrow keys to move around, of course. Please do not do this. This is absolutely anti-vim to use the arrow keys. But then you're like, okay, so uh, how do I move around? Well, you actually press um, L to move right, J to move down, H to move left, and K to move up. And you're thinking, wait a second. How am I supposed to enter H, J, K, or L if those are the ones that act as my arrow keys? Well, the first thing to note about Vim is that it is a modal editor. And by default, you're in normal, normal mode, not insert mode. So you're not entering text. By default, you are entering commands. The L command, the L key action, whatever you want to call it, the L movement, is going to move you one character to the right. The H is going to move you one character to the left, J is down, and K is up. So I'm actually going to um, quit Vim right now and open up a new file that we can play around with. Oh dang it, how do you exit Vim? This is such a common problem, it's almost become a trope uh, or like a stereotype, some sort of a joke among programmers is how do you exit Vim? Well, it's very simple. All you have to do is make sure that you're in normal mode by pressing escape a few times, then type in shift and then, um, well, you type in a colon, so shift semicolon on usually, um, that, that'll be on your standard um, United States keyboard and type in a colon and then press Q A exclamation point and that will quit all of Vim and it won't save any of your changes, so if you accidentally enter Vim, you didn't want to, you don't know if you messed anything up, type in this, and you won't mess anything up. So then press enter, there, we're good. Now I'm just gonna start Vim, just playing, we're not editing a file specifically, and, whew, okay, this is a new file in Vim. So we can try our actions, um, nothing's happening because it's an empty file, these um, squiggly characters and all this text, there's, there's nothing in this file right now, it's empty, okay? So, in order to put something in this file, we want to enter insert mode, and we can do that by pressing the I key. All right, so now we're in insert mode. We can see that with this little piece of text here. Okay, insert mode. All right, so now we can we can now type some text to our heart's desire or whatever. Okay, so there we go. There's some text. Um, here is some more sample text that we are going to use um, Vim use to demonstrate the functionality of Vim. Vim is a great edit editor. I use it rather frequently. If I can type. Here are the commands we've learned so far colon q a exclamation point exit vim discard changes h left j down k up l right and then escape normal mode okay there we go and I'm in normal mode right now. So let's learn some more commands and I can add them as we go along. So 
Um, I'm going to append some text to the end of this line, but if I press I and type some text, it's going to append it. It's going to insert the text before the cursor here. So I'm going to go into um, normal mode again and then press A for append. And I can append text to the end of this line. So then I can press enter and say A, append after cursor. Okay? I, we insert before, I, insert before, and A is append after cursor. Okay? Then there are modified versions of these commands. That is A, so capital A, so shift A, and capital I. If I move up to this line and press capital A, I append text to the end of the line. Okay? So I'll move down here and say append to end of line. Okay? And I, what do you think that's going to do? That inserts at the beginning of a line. Insert at beginning of line. Okay? Beautiful. We have a whole arsenal of commands already. Things are looking great. Now, the concept of modes in Vim might be kind of off-putting and weird to you. It's like, why can't you just always be in insert mode like a normal sane text editor? Well, Vim is really something, it's a skill that you should learn because it kind of has, it. using Vim in normal mode, it's almost like you're programming the editor live. You're interacting with the editor more than just telling it what to put on the screen. You're telling it what to do. So normal mode in Vim should be your safe space. You should be in normal mode as much as possible, especially when editing a file where you're not just typing in text, where you're editing what's already in the file. Normal mode is your friend, okay? So use HJKL. Don't move your hand over to the arrow keys. Just normal mode is your friend. You'll get used to it. So let's learn some more commands in normal mode so it'll actually be useful to us. Say I decided that these lines were in the wrong spot. I wanted, um, I, I need to say delete this line, escape normal mode, and I need to put that at the very top of the file. So we need to delete. We need to figure out how to delete things in normal mode. The command for delete is, of course, D. So if I press D, nothing happens. And that's because Vim is expecting us to tell it what to delete. I can tell it to delete the whole line by pressing DD. Oh, dang it, how do I get it back? I didn't want to do that right now. Well, <laughs> luckily, U is for undo and Control R is for redo. So I'm going to add those. U is undo, Control R redo. Okay, but I need to delete this line because I don't like it or something like that. So I press D and then D again. So just DD, that's going to delete a line for you. That's actually a special case for the D command, so I'm going to undo that. Um, Vim has this concept of motions and we've learned four motions so far. Okay, we've learned H, J, K, and L, but there are more motions. We can move by words by pressing W, and that'll move our cursor to the beginning of the next word. We could press E to move our cursor to the end of the next word, and then if we want to go backwards, we can press B to move back words. Okay, so let's add those. W, um, first char character of next word. E, last character of next word and B, first character of previous word. And how does Vim decide what a word is? Well, it's a combination of white space and special characters. Special characters um, delimit words. Um, as you can see here, control dash R is not one word, it's three. But we can only skip by white space by pressing shift B, Shift W, 
shift e those will all skip by white space and i'm going to stop um writing down all of these commands because that's going to make the tutorial too long um we have enough text here that we can uh manipulate it pretty freely and have a lot of fun so back to deleting if i want to delete just this word i can say dw and then i'll delete that word i'll undo that um if i want to delete to just the end of the word from here d e deletes to the end of the word undo that so this is still not really enough to make vim faster at editing than a normal text editor so we have more to cover and that is repetition we can repeat things in vim by preceding the command or the um, motion usually with a number. So I want to delete these three words. I can press D3W, deletes those three words. If I just want to delete two, D2W, okay? And this doesn't just have to be for an action such as delete. This can be for just the motions, 2W, 2W. It's gonna move by two words. We can delete down a line with dj we can combine those commands um we can d4j delete those four lines down um, and remember dd is a special case to delete just a line but now we run into kind of another problem and that is okay we've been deleting all this stuff how do we put it somewhere else you know copy and paste well vim does have its own concept of copying and pasting as well as cut you know cut copy paste it's kind of your um, three clipboard actions in fact deleting is automatically putting things into your clipboard but not your control c control v clipboard it's putting into vim's special clipboard and we can paste things from this clipboard um, by pressing p so i press p and it looks like the last thing i deleted was that uh, lowercase i line so I want to delete this escape dash normal mode line and put it at the top. So I'm gonna DD to delete the line, press K to move up to the top here, and press P to paste it up here at the top. We can just copy a line by pressing YY. Um, usually in Vim, if you press just a character twice, an action twice, DD, YY, um, that's going to do it for the whole line. So we have DD, delete the line, undo that why why is going to just yank yank is vim's word for copy the contents of that line and then it'll put that in the clipboard and we can paste it to our heart's content all right so cut copy paste we have that down pat um there are commands that we can learn for every key on the keyboard but of course this tutorial is already running long and so i'll leave you with just a few more things okay we have a few more actions um or motions that is uh dollar sign to move to the end of the line carrot to move to the first character in a line now here's an interesting thing zero also moves to the first character of the line but there is a difference say i was dealing with a bunch of indentation so i just inserted two tabs and um, these characters, um, kind of funny in Vim how um, my cursor is currently on the first tab, but it looks like it's on the seventh, eighth character or something in the line. Um, that's just how Vim works with tabs. Um, anyways, this is the first character of the line. If I press zero, or, okay, I'll move to the end of the line with dollar sign. If I press zero, that's where my cursor goes end of the line again if i press caret it moves to the first non-white space character in the line so that's really useful for dealing with indentation is um caret usually for the beginning of the line that's shift six by the way it's caret and shift four um dollar sign for the end of the line if you are familiar with regular expressions uh these characters will make sense to you otherwise it's just something that you have to learn okay so um i'll delete these Oh, how was I deleting single characters? I didn't tell you that, did I? Um, you can delete a single character by pressing X. Okay, X. Um, and sh that's going to delete the character that the cursor is currently on. So X, delete FI. But if I press Shift X, it'll delete the character immediately before the cursor. 
that's capital X for you. And there you go. That is enough to get you started editing in Vim. There is so much more to cover, and I would recommend opening up a computer program called Vim Tutor that you probably got along with your Vim installation. That'll guide you through a lot more of what Vim has to offer. But before I let you go, we have to know how to save our work. You already know how to quit. That's Q, quit, A, quit everything if you have more than one file open. An exclamation point, that's gonna quit without saving. But I want to save this file. So you quit, uh, well, so you write a file by colon W, okay? That'll write the file. If I press enter, it says I have no file name. So as I first write the file, I have to give it a file name. I'm gonna say Vim demo. Okay, now it just wrote vim demo as a new file. And now I can quit by saying Q. And there you go. We're done with vim and things are looking up. There's so much more that you can do with vim. I would encourage you to read the vim tutor, read the user manual, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one.